right, Doug, how's the drive going? It's not exactly white knuckle. It's going good. <laughs> right on. I'm glad to hear that. What are we gonna talk about, Dave? Oh, I was just having this really interesting talk with this guy named Doug about being <laughs> appropriately scared. That's right. <laughs> no, as we were saying, um, backcountry skiing, snowmobiling, whatever, it's recreation, it's fun. And it's, I think people can get into trouble, or I know people can get into trouble because they're not treating it with the seriousness that it deserves. And you'd brought up being scared, and that's a great, that's a great point. Because when we're scared, we take things pretty seriously. And if we know we're going into an environment that's high risk, we need to prepare for it. And people don't always appreciate the risk that we take when we go backcountry skiing. So that seriousness, that attentiveness, um, I think is lacking. And yeah, we're just trying to brainstorm ways to get people to treat, yeah, treat their activity, even though it's recreation, but treat it seriously. How do you deal with that balance though? Like, I, mean, I don't want to be scared the whole time when I'm out skiing. Well, no, but you play the what-if game, you know, and the what-if game changes as the risk changes. So, you know, even on the mellowest day, you still might play the what-if game of, well, what if my partner blows her knee out? What if I hit a tree? What if I get the car stuck? What if, what if my binding breaks? What if know? I get the snowmobile stuck? What if, and that has never happened. That has never, never happened. Never happened. The history of snowmobiling. Four times, he got it stuck four times today. Uh, in a row, in a row. In, in a row, actually, yeah, yes. It might have been a world record, I'm not sure. <laughs> really, a world record, Doug? A lion head record. A lion head record, okay. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, yeah, and, and, and the reason we're having this discussion is the avalanche danger is gonna go up. Um, because we're seeing a storm coming in the next day or two and we're expecting especially in down south the avalanche danger is going to spike and we want people to treat that with the respect and the seriousness that it deserves and they need to prepare for it and that means reading the advisory getting the information they need also doing things like looking at the weather digging snow pits and communicating with their partners um, so we don't make stupid mistakes. I think it's really interesting because you know sometimes when we're at work and doing this professionally it's it's really easy to stay super focused and really diligent um, and it's, I think we're, we're paid say, to. We're I paid mean, to we're, right? We're paid to watch out for our partners. Exactly. We're paid to do this stuff. But on a day but off it's easier to just be casual. Start to get into cruise control mode Right, where we think we know what's happening and we really don't, um, you know, and, and we just always have to, you know, we want to prepare because preparing for things, preparing by, it starts with, you know, at the car we're doing beacon checks. It's, it's if we're going to ski a slope, it's going one at a time and setting out, like, well, where are we stopping mid-slope? Are we going to ski the full 2,000 foot run and meet at the bottom, or, which would probably be a bad idea, or are we going to stop midway and where might that point be? Um, you know, if we're snowmobiling, who's our partner? Are we, are we watching out for each other? Is there some person lost? Are we going to get into a situation where we have a huge group and now suddenly we have a missing person? Um, are we in the runout zones where we could trigger slides higher up? You know, these are all things that we need to be thinking about in the car when we wake up with coffee. I mean, like before we're ever in the environment where decisions matter, we have to be prepared to make them. I think that the stuff about uh, skiing one at a time and finding a safe zone to stop, not doing the full 2,000 feet. And if you're skiing 2,000 feet by yourself, not stopping you, you should really be thinking and you're skiing by yourself you're not skiing right. with a partner at that well, point you're, you're essentially solo um, even a thousand feet I mean you're essentially solo which brings up um, Mark Staples and Evelyn Lees at the Utah Avalanche Center did a, a nice study where they looked at the avalanche fatalities over the last I think seven years um, and they found that almost half of the avalanche fatalities people were either 
truly solo or they were essentially solo meaning that even though they had a point, but like they're like that thing where they're not stopping they're not that. either either not stopping or a partner was ineffective because either they were in the avalanche with them or they didn't see them because they were around the corner um, they weren't watching each other so effectively you were solo um, even though you can say oh we were, were together um, they weren't a true a partner in the true sense of the word of watching you being ready to help you and save your life if you need it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, it, but fifty percent is a lot. So just that alone, I mean, geez, just doing that, being a better partner, um, means that they could have halved the or close to half the um, you know some of the fatalities down there. So it's important. Well, it's kind of one of those those things that it's. A, I think it's easy to forget how hard it is to be a good partner and how hard it is to really keep an eye on each other and really be in position to affect a rescue. Right. I mean, it's it's a it's more of a professional mindset. It's more of a it's a mindset. When, or I mean, professional. It's a serious mindset. It's a, it's it's taking whatever that activity is and being serious about it because you know that your actions matter for your partner and vice versa and you take it seriously and you don't cut corners um, you don't let your partners cut the corners that's what that's what a good partner does is they call you out when you're when you're gonna do something stupid um, they they tell you you're being a knucklehead and uh, which I appreciate because <laughs> well, well, yeah, I meant to tell you something <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Dave what <laughs> oh, it's, 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 I, can't, I can't remember now I can't remember. <laughs>